Ekpo as he entered the ring last night. Twice the fight with Eklund had been postponed, leaving him with just one contest in that time, and that was all over in the first round. Eklund from Sweden, absolute giant of a man, even bigger than Bruno, making his first defence inconsistent but very dangerous. Big crowd at Wembley, the Levine Duff promotion was sponsored by the Mirror, and at ringside was our commentator, Harry Carpenter. Well, these are two giants of the ring. Bruno, 16 stone and a half a pound, and having to concede 20 pounds, stone and six pounds to the Swedish giant, who comes in at 17 stone, six and a half. Anders Eklund, the champion. Look at the difference in height. is here. Seconds out. Can Bruno's punch topple the Giants? Eklund has had an up and down career, and I mean that literally. He's had disastrous nights. And he's had one very good night when he won this title from Stefan Tankstad of Norway. That was in March. Bruno's gone straight into the attack with the big bombing blows. And he's certainly scored the first psychological points. And he's given the big man from Sweden a taste of what's coming. And he's already beginning to look very shaky. Eklund, that is. Eklund, a big man, but on rather thin legs for such a giant. Now, Eklund's really got to get the reach working here, otherwise he's going to be swept out of this very quickly. And Bruno, at the moment, catching him with everything. Including good left jabs. Eklund himself can be dangerous. He proved that when he won the title. So Bruno will need to be a little cautious. He doesn't want a bone crusher or a jumbo Cummings. Two men who really shook him up. Bruno certainly moving around the ring quite neatly. Looks loose and confident. taking deep breaths. And Bruno hasn't yet found him with the really big right. And this crowd already beginning to warm to this fight, sponsored by the Mirror. The cheers coming already from this Wembley Arena, hoping against hope that Bruno is really going to put the bomb in in a minute and sweep the giant away. Eklund seems to have recovered from the very, very shaky start. Quick job indeed there. He came out so confidently. Wonderful start. No nerves at all. Looked absolutely in charge at the start. And for about a minute, it looked as though he might just get it over very, very fast indeed. Frank Bruno, 23 years old, four years younger than Eklund. 16 stone and a half a pound, 20 pounds lighter. Three inches shorter and conceding an inch in reach. 84 inches to 85 ranked number nine now by the World Boxing Council, Bruno. Let's have another look at that uh, good start by Bruno in the opening round. 
He really did find the man so easily with lefts and rights early on. So that corner will be quite pleased with that start. Round two. Franz Marti, the Swiss referee, having a job clearing the Swedish corner. It's important here that uh, Bruno doesn't let Eklund get confident and settle down. And already Eklund's nose is bleeding, and that's because of the jabs that Bruno has planted on it. He's been impressive with the jabs. Very uncomfortable. And Bruno not going wild with the right hand. He's waiting. Eklund's face now very marked indeed. And we're not through the second round yet. Nose bleeding. Looks red about the eyes. and feeling, as so many other men have done, the weight of Bruno's punching. With Larry Holmes having been beaten by light heavyweight Mike Spinks in the last few days, the whole heavyweight situation is blown wide open now. And Bruno's big chance if he wins this. Could be not too far away, but not if he takes punches like that. He stood for the right hand, and Eklund was through with it. And there's the danger sign, the first of them, for Bruno. And he looks a bit disturbed, too. Now, he needs to keep cool here. And above all, keep away from the right of the Swede. And the Swede has suddenly gained a lot of confidence. Bruno's hurt. And that bell has come at a very, very opportune time for Frank Bruno because once again he was caught by the sucker right hand. Jumbo Cummings did that to him once and he threw a fight away against Bone Crusher Smith by getting caught in the last round when he had the fight won. Let's have a look at that again because this is the danger for Bruno if he gets careless. There it is. Just masked by the size, the sheer huge hulk of the man but nonetheless Bruno felt that right hand and he still didn't look too good at uh, the end of the round you can see what I mean about the marks on the face of Eklund marked about the eyes nose bleeding but has now been given a vital bit of confidence having thrown that right Second out. and landed with it Round three. And there's a bump at the side of uh, Bruno's left eye, and I think that's where the right hand caught him. looking very suspect when Eklund comes forward. And Bruno, a lot less mobile than he was. He badly needs a big right here now. He tried and he only just missed with it. Telling Bruno to break when he's told to. Round three. The bombs exploding all over the place as we thought they might in this fight. 
looking unlikely to go 12 rounds, which is the scheduled distance. certainly gained in confidence since that very, very shaky opening. All Bruno's best work so far has been with the left jab. is hanging on inside oh and the bell has come not a moment too soon for Eklund oh, another 30 seconds and it might have been all over Bruno suddenly found him with the right and this huge man six feet six and nearly 17 and a half stone was suddenly reeling around like a rag doll let's have another look the first time Bruno had really caught up with him with the right look at that came chopping in over the top and suddenly Eklam, another one all over the place didn't know where to go except claim Bruno another angle on it a sample of what Bruno can do to men that wasn't the one that really did the damage that was the one it caught him lower down on the jaw and the senses almost left him so the champion now in some trouble second out Round four. And this crowd sensing that Bruno could be on the edge of victory here. He's got him again with the right and a second one in his hand. Right at the start of the fourth round, ten seconds in. Is he going to beat the county? I don't think he is. He's not coming up. And Bruno is the European champion and he's made his mark in the world. Bruno's first title and he's only 23 and he's done it in the opening seconds of the fourth round you can hardly do any better than that champion of europe and lawless the manager acclaims him as well he set him up in the third and he finished him in short order at the start of the fourth so eckland won the title in march and he's lost it at the start of October. And Bruno starts on his reign as the big man in Europe. My lords, ladies and gentlemen. My lords, ladies and gentlemen. Eklund, having been counted out after 20 seconds of round four, the winner and new heavyweight champion of Europe is Frank Bruno! Frank, congratulations. Thank well, how does it feel to be a champion? It feels beautiful. Very, very beautiful. I didn't think I would see you again, Harry. You know what I mean? I thought you retired from the show, but... No, 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 no you've got you it all wrong. No, no, right. no. <laughs> right, tell me all about it. Well, at first I tried to knock him out because I know something else knocked him out and people what beat him but he was a good guy big 17 stuff 17 and a half stone he could jab and move well and he could punch i dig dig a little bit but i thank god i'm champion harry you don't know how it feels to you be champion jab too badly yourself you yeah i would look good to yeah you. i was trying to um knock him out with the jab instead of picking it and trying with the hook but i've been rusty for about six weeks so what do you expect harry you did have one right hand that caught you he um, did hurt you a bit in no, the I don't uh, think second it hurt me. All the punches what he caught me with, I knew that they were going to come. I was trying to exhaust himself out because I knew I, I had to go more than three, one round tonight, you know, because he's a tough boy, you know. I think we might be able to see right. how you finish. Here you are. Now yeah. tell me all about this here. I was trying to set him up, jab him, because he knew the jab was coming yeah, all the time. 
but I wanted to sneak it over the top. I did sneak over the top, but he's a craftsman, you know? He tries to hold and grab you like an octopus, you know? Like, you can see there, but I just wanted to but just you destroy didn't, him. But you yeah, didn't let him go. Once you hook. had him going, you didn't yeah. let him go. Right, Harry. Well, now the night after, Frank Bruno has joined us in the Sports Night studio. Frank, many congratulations Thank on that title. Much. How did Cheers. you enjoy your first day as European champion? Um, it feels very, very good. I would have liked to have the belt around my waist and showing it off now, but I just thank God I'm the European champion. Yes, you'd have fancied uh, wearing that running around the park this morning. You're out yeah, six miles, really. Yeah, really this morning, yeah, just to loosen that a little bit, yeah. Right. Also very pleased to welcome the other great hero of the week, Barry McGuigan, still emphatically world featherweight champion. Thank Barry, you. your impressions of that performance by great Frank? Great performance. Uh, I'd have to say that, that, that I think Frank was much looser this time. I think the rest has done the world of good. He's, uh, he's improving all the time and I think uh, there's the heavyweight scene's wide open at the minute for Frank and I think he can become the champion of the world if he, if he works hard enough and I'm sure he'll, he'll do that. Absolutely. Winning the first title takes a great weight off your shoulders, doesn't it? It certainly does, and uh, I think he's a great prospect. As this is turning into a mutual admiration society, uh, Frank, where did, where did you see uh, Barry's performance on Saturday night? Um, I was staying at Terry's house, and I saw it then, yeah. Good must performance. Must mm -hmm. have been a tremendous inspiration. Yeah, considering that all the pressure, you know, fighting in the home, home ground and all the pressure, what he's gone through, he's very cool that night, and yeah. despite of his time, you know, and yeah. he caught up with the guy, because yeah. he was a slippery yeah. customer. Mr. Taylor was. He sure was. Was that really the story of the night? Well, it was just a matter of uh, I knew that he was much quicker than me, and it would be it would be uh, it would be a bit uh, he'd be elusive in the early rounds, and he had very fast hands, and uh, he could move extremely well to, to either left or right. So he made me look a bit clumsy, I suppose, early on. But I knew that it was only a matter of time, and I started to whack him around the body. And uh, after six or seven rounds, it would, you know I'd be starting to slow down. So. I was very pleased indeed to get it over with because as far as I was concerned he was the most uh, dangerous featherweight around at the minute and uh, um, you know very pleased and it's opened a few doors for me. Right yes the big question what next mm. for both of you particularly you, you Frank as the world title now beckons not really that simple as there are, there are three versions of the world yeah. heavyweight championship right. at the moment the WBA with the world champion Tony Tubbs the World Boxing Council with a the champion there Pinkland Thomas and yeah. the International Boxing Federation with a world champion Mike, Mike Spinks, Spinks, the yeah. man who's just ended that long reign right. of Larry Holmes. Spinks really the favourite to throw down the challenge yeah. because uh, his manager Butch Lewis said yeah. this morning, Mr Bruno can consider himself at the top of the list in terms of my thinking. We have no problems in coming to London now. What's your reaction to I'll that? I'll just keep my fingers crossed and I just hope he keeps up to that promise, you know. What do you know of Mike Spinks and the um, I know, that one? Um, I've seen him train for about two weeks when we went to New York when I fought on the um, Barry's Bill in Chicago and seeing box against Larry Holmes and I see some of his defence and I know how he trains and I know what sort of fighter he is and he's a very good fighter but I think he's a light heavyweight and he's stepping up to heavyweight but I think I stand a very good chance against him. That's if his manager keeps up to that statement what he just made. Yes, as you know, it, the, the, yeah. there's a long way to go yet. It's, it's very hard to set up a world title fight. Yeah, like it's that. very, very hard but I don't. if the money's there I don't think it would be hard. Right. Barry, you've said uh, in the book that is published uh, in very timely fashion this week, Leave the Fighting to McGuigan, you, you talked about the problems in, in setting up the, the world title fight with Pedroza. Very frustrating time mm. for a fighter, isn't it? Well, that's, that's true, yes. Uh, um, you know, we, we, myself and mis my manager, Mr. Eastwood, of course, he was the one that done all the, the, the hard work uh, as far as organisation was concerned. Uh, when you're dealing with, with Latin Americans, uh, they're, they're, they're more difficult even to deal with the, 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 than, than uh, the top Americans, so uh, uh, there was all sorts of problems. But uh, we eventually got them sorted out, but there was a lot of headaches along the way, a lot of problems and uh, all sorts of options involved in the contract. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't actually the number one contender, I was number three contender, and um, I w we skipped Bernard Taylor to, to get a crack at the title, but included in the contract was that I must make my first defence against Taylor within 120 days. So I, I was tied to that and, mm. uh, you know, th there's all sorts of problems. I don't think that people uh, realise just uh, what's involved. Uh, there's, so, so, there's so many uh, other people involved as well, you know. So what advice would you have to Frank in combating all those frustrations then? Well, my advice to, to Frank was just leave it to, to his manager and just, just sit back and relax and let it all happen because it's going to happen eventually. 
Everything is now going to happen for both of you, both in and out of the ring. How easy is it, Barry, to keep your feet on the ground in this kind of situation? Well, it's very difficult at times. As Frank said, I was under a lot of pressure in Belfast, but, uh, um, you know, he said to me, I don't, you know, it must have been incredible the pressure but re really and truly i felt great in belfast i can box and, and relax and keep cool in belfast it's my home and it's where i like to prepare and it's it's easy for me over there but i can understand that the pressures are are, are, are very difficult at times and, and frank has had his his course of, of, of pressure and i think he's getting used to it now and he's able to cope with it better and i think that'll help him as a fighter do you feel that you're getting used to all the pressure, Frank? Does, yeah, I've been under pressure? the pressure for about three years now, you know, and I'm getting very adapted to it, you know what I mean? And I'm just relaxed with it now. As long as you're getting well paid and everything's smoothly, it's nice. I'm relaxing and just rocking with the pressure. Yeah, we can sense the pressure lifting from both of you now. Right. Yeah, Barry, well, thank, yeah. thank you very much, Steve. And, uh, you know, I'd just like to take this opportunity to wish Frank the very best of luck in, in his world title attempts, and I think he's going to do it. Great Cheers week's work. Thank you very much. Cheers. Nice one. Well, we're going